Alright, so this is what happened to the cube. Poor thing. Side swipe action there. By the way, my wife and my little one are doing alright. And we're not really injured, so that's a blessing in itself. You can see the B pillar kind of pushed in a little there. Axle definitely out of whack, but not a big problem. I did get the door to open with a pry bar. Now it does open and close. Testament to how tough these little things are. Door is definitely toast. It's pretty crinkled. And my GTI has the exact small window door. Not a problem. B pillar itself crinkled pretty bad down here. The rocker is good up to about that point forward it's all right the inner rocker is fine no dents or twists or anything so i'll be able to just replace the outer skin when we come inside here we can see a slight wrinkle right here this is in the footwell but it's not bad enough that i will really need to do anything i'm going to put a tiny little plate just to reinforce it same goes with a tiny bit of flex right here it's uh, ever so slightly wrinkled again not a problem I'll be able to put a, a tiny little plate there just for some slight reinforcement and this entire inner panel will be coming out anyway as will that little panel the inside of the fender well pretty screwed up I'll be bringing that from my donor car as well. So I'll be cutting pretty much everything up to the seam there on the fender, all coming out. Outside panel, look at that, door still closes, can't believe that. Outside panel, the upper part here off the body seam is actually really not damaged. So I'm going to attempt, when I start, to cut just this lower part Kind of along that body line there and just section that piece in along with the lower portion of the outer B pillar. If that doesn't work I'm still going to have the entire upper portion here from my donor golf so not a big problem. The shock tower is in the right spot, it's not twisted. We'll come underneath here. The axle took the brunt of it. You can see where it's twisted, the shock itself has been twisted in the rubber, but the shock itself did not get bent. Um, the tire kind of pushed against it, but the only thing it did was twist here. So the beam took the brunt of it, the spindle is still straight, the wheel was still straight, the shock is still straight, not leaking, still moves like it's supposed to. So I'll be replacing the beam with all the parts that are currently right here. So, really happy about that. All in all, it could have been a lot worse. The car took the impact rather well. It was a Dodge van, so pretty heavy vehicle, 4,000 plus pounds. Spun this car a full 180 degrees, clear up onto a sidewalk against a retaining wall. It did unfortunately do a tiny bit of damage on the other side to my beautiful red stripe bumpers that have no holes in them except for that now and a, a light scuff no dents so that'll be able to be scuffed off when I paint the car not a huge problem I'm gonna be it uh, broke my grill a little bit so I'm gonna be going with just a, a dual round setup instead of the quad rounds because one of my fog lights is bad anyway but she will live again Cool electric mirrors on there, transfer to my other doors. I'll have to save that wing window. Shout out to Meister Works on the west coast of the USA. Dave Meister, their head honcho there. Tons of cool Euro tuning. They do some great stuff out there. He's a, an online friend and I've uh, done a lot of business with him too. If you guys want some stuff, Meister Works, W-E-R-K-S. Guys are pretty badass. We're going to put this little Wolfsburg back together again, and it will not be red. Red is a bad luck color for me. Every red car I've ever had has been run into by someone else. They've all been Volkswagens, and I am no longer doing that. 
this car will be Montana green. I already have the paint, so no longer going to be this tornado red, even though that's what the build sheet still has on it. But hopefully it'll break the bad luck streak and nobody will run into it after that. I don't know. Fingers crossed. But that's the plan for all you guys that have been kind of curious as to what we got to do to the poor thing. I will be doing a lot of updates once we start cutting the car apart, which hopefully will be happening here in the next couple of weeks. I'm still paying insurance for the license plates and stuff, so I uh, can't really afford to have it sitting too long paying for a dead car. But keep checking back. We're going to be posting lots of pictures, maybe a few videos, and hopefully have this thing back on the road. I want to be taking some pictures and going to car shows this summer, so that is the goal. Step one underway. We have the old axle out. We have the new beam axle in. Well, new-ish. It is from my old rotted 87 16 valve GTI. But it was still in pretty nice shape, so we did manage to remove all of the brake lines and everything without even opening them, so I don't even have to bleed the system here. But the new axle is hanging. Strut was not bent, which is wonderful. Everything uh, lines up nice and square, went together really easy. That way we can get the tire back on it, point in the right direction. I will have to do some cutting. This portion of the fender, give you a good angle here, is pushed in severely. So I'm gonna have to cut that so that I can put the tire back on without it rubbing. It was rubbing pretty bad before. Because you can see on this side how far out that particular fender does stick, so it was pushed in quite a ways. And so here is the bad axle. You can actually see where the bend occurred. It was so violent that it actually cracked all the surface rust off of it. And uh, it cocked her over pretty good. But everything came apart, spindle's still in good shape, it's all still square, rotor turns nice. So we'll go ahead and pop all that hardware off. I sure wish I had a, enough funds right now to go ahead and throw a new set of rotors and bearings on the rear, but what are you gonna do? I'm gonna use an old broken wheel here as a stand to work on the axle a little, a little easier. We're getting ready to pop the bearings off, pull the spindles off, swap everything over to the other axle. And aside from some really greasy hands here in a little bit, it should be sitting back on all four wheels, pointing the same direction. Part two, part two. And that's the passenger side. That's what it's supposed to look like. Much better. They're all four pointing the same directions now. But you can see just how far in things got pushed because that tire used to fit inside that bent part so that axle had a severe twist to it much much better but that's a long way sticking out right now we're just getting the battery charged up it's actually got a small hole in the battery now too from that impact the bracket on the back side here punctured a tiny little hole and when you fill up the cell, uh, cell with water it kind of pees on the ground down there so it doesn't hold a charge very long have to go get a new one not a big deal next move we're gonna fire it up and move it to the spot where I'm gonna actually start cutting the side off of this thing which is going to be right in the front yard because the neighbor up the street over there is a jerk, calls the cops on me all the time for trying to fix our cars. And since I'll be up on my property, he really can't say anything. Uh, next video, I guess, we'll probably start chopping the side off of this thing. That's the fun stuff. This is how we do things when you have a jerk neighbor. Umbrella, nice and shady. In the yard, inside the property line, past the right of way. Sidewalk is clear. No one can touch me. Yeah, it's a little janky. I do not recommend you do a jack stand on a piece of wood on a slight incline while working on your car. But if I die, it's my fault. I went out in a good way working on my Volkswagen. 
but no, that's not a good excuse. So yeah, disclaimer. So we're getting ready right now to start cutting. At minimum, I gotta cut the fender back because the tire does still rub, uh, hitting little bumps and stuff. It, it rubs pretty good catching right here. And uh, it chewed a few chunks off of the rubber while I was moving the car to get it up here. But axle feels good. Um, so I gotta get this done to where I can actually at least drive it or I might just get ambitious and cut the whole bad piece out here. <clears throat> here is the replacement section. It's the entire B pillar all the way back to the middle of the fender and then all the way up to the front door hinge. There's a, a couple tiny little rust spots that I do have to repair on this but not a big deal. It's going to be all stripped apart anyway. So here we go. Time to fire up the old death wheel that yes still has the cover on it. I'm not completely insane. My death wish isn't, you know, completely there. So, but hopefully the next update will have some chunks cut out and maybe some chunks almost ready to go in. Yeah, things are looking a little bit better. This is the passenger side, obviously, undamaged. You can kind of see the how straight that window line is between the window and the door going across the B pillar. Come to the other side. We have almost exactly the same thing. So it's uh, fitting pretty good with the replacement door. We're still a big gaping hole in the side here. But I wanted to make sure to get things lined up where they're supposed to be. So major improvement. I'm gonna have to adjust a few things to make the door fit just right, but it's much, much better. And this wrinkle above the fender here, got a feeling is probably gonna go away. I still need to bring the inside of the fender out just a little bit. It's a little wrinkled in there yet, so I think once I bring that back out, the uh, wrinkle right here should straighten out. It's, it's not very bad there. So I think just some pulling should be pretty good. Gotta love what you can accomplish in a day that's not 500 degrees outside. Well, here it is, the middle of the next day. We have chopped apart our big donor piece. You can see that's the top part of the B pillar and the upper fender with the, the window sill. And then this is the extraordinarily sharp lower rocker. And then this part where my hand's at is actually where the rear beam bolts on right there. We have sectioned the piece out that we needed, except for this, I'll be saving that. That's for the door card to set on. We cut out the piece that we needed, basically everything that was bent. And now I currently just have it kind of vice gripped. Always, always, always cut the car smaller than the piece of metal that you have to put back in it. That way you can trim a little bit, trim a little bit, trim a little bit. I like to make tiny little relief cuts in the car itself. That way when I press the metal tight, I have a small gap where I can kind of fill it back in with weld. And then wherever you can match up the old welds, do that using some vice grips here. I currently have the inside of the fender just kind of flopping in there. Since it does not have to be as pretty, it just needs to be structurally sound and watertight when it's done. So it's just bent out of the way for now. Same as uh, down here in the bottom, you can kind of see it. But the main thing is the seam along here fits right against that body line. I like to use body lines whenever I can. Lines up here, I'll weld a 
attack here and attack there and tweak things until they line up. Got a pretty decent seam here. Just kind of butts its way all along. So that's uh, where we're sitting right now. I have gotten my cheap little flux core welder. Don't need anything fancy when you're doing sheet metal because who cares? This thing was cheap. Welds good as long as you use a high grade flux core wire in it. I think I paid $130 for this stupid little welder. It's only 110 volt, but uh, I used some Hobart flux core wire. It's good stuff. Leaves a pretty nice weld, very little uh, spatter to clean up. Penetrates nicely, perfect for sheet metal, exhaust, things like that. It'll be perfect for putting this back together. We will see you in the next update. Just a quick update. Things are coming along very, very nicely. Everything fits really well. And I'll show you really quick the technique I use. What you do, use your vice grips like I showed earlier. Clamp everything so that they line up, especially where these welds and stuff are at. You can use that as a perfect way to see where the factory had everything lined up. As you can see, this stuff here is fitting together really, really well. But what I did, since I knew that this weld was going to be a perfect line right here, I started there, welded that in a line, and then I slowly worked my way out. And then this sheet metal along the side, I would hold it where I needed to hold it, put a tack. And then I'd move a little ways down, hold it into where I needed to hold it, put a tack. And I just worked my way all the way around, and especially right here, because there's some complex bends, I start at the top corner so that it, that corner stays where it needs to. Then the next time there's a joint, I bend it to where the joints line up, then I weld it. Then I would pull it again and bend it to where that joint lined up. Then I would pull it to where that lined up. Then I'd pull it to where that lined up. Then the final one, pull it to where that one lines up. And you can see it's kind of blowing through a little bit. That is okay. You'll eventually fill the entire thing in with weld and then grind it smooth. So it'll actually be one piece of metal all the way along there, no holes or anything. And then the same is going down here. I just weld it, move along, hold it where I need to, weld it, weld it, just working my way so that everything lines up. I'm getting ready to do a complex one underneath here. I'll be laying on the ground for that, so I'll probably light my pants on fire, which is great. But as you can see, it's fitting nice and tight. Door closes easily. And then as we move around the back of the car, you can see the body line of the car is where it needs to be. It's smooth all the way along. I will need very, very little filler. Basically just enough to take the welding and sanding marks out. As you can see that, is just how simple it is to actually do this. Not as hard as everybody likes to think. Day one of welding complete. Turns out I need to go get a spool of wire. I've been welding on my go-kart quite a bit lately, so I kind of ran myself out. But we've got it tacked in, top and bottom. Nice and straight. Looks good. Body lines look good. Door shuts exactly the way it needs to, pushes shut real light, which is crazy because I haven't even aligned the hinges yet. So it uh, it fits, it fits nice. Real happy so far with the outcome. And if I can get another spool of wire here pretty quick, I'll get the rest of it welded up and we'll squirt a little paint to keep it from rusting. And uh, we'll be changing the color of this thing eventually. No more red cars. If you've been following any of the other videos I've made, you'll know why I don't like having red cars. Not so much the color itself, it's just some sort of bad luck thing, so. But stay tuned in. We're gonna keep cranking on this little girl until she is back on the road. Oh, and a quick spoiler. I believe I have myself set up a line, or lined up a set of Volkswagen Sebring wheels off of like a, the G60 or the Synchro uh, Golf that was a real cool thing over in Europe, so that's what's going to be going on this girl for her summertime wheels, cool Sebrings. Check in in the future, we'll keep doing more tour. And 
here we see close to the finished product. Did all the spot welding and uh, used a grinder and then a sandpaper flapper wheel. Kind of smoothed everything out. And uh, you can see just a little bit of where I was welding. There's a little bead along there, but the body line's pretty smooth. There's the bottom weld. It's a little wavery kind of up in this area here. It was tricky getting it to fit right around that door, but a little bit of body filler will make that go away. And I ground a bunch of old adhesive off here that was solid as a rock. That's why there's a little bit of primer on there just to keep that from rusting. But lined up pretty good. And you can see the body line of the car is pretty much right where we run it. There's very little warping, just that one little spot right there. We're going to have to play with that with a set of spoons. But uh, the fender lined up pretty good. There's only a slight divot. So all in all, repair and like I'm telling you guys it is not hard to do just take your time on the prep do little chunks at a time I am NOT a professional body man I have never once taken a class or a course I basically watched my dad do this 20 years ago and just kind of remembered a little bit of what he did but just taking your time you can get pretty nice results. This car was almost destined for the scrap heap and with some scrap parts and just some elbow grease and some patience, it will live again. It will be painted beautiful Montana green. If you're not a Volkswagen person, Google that color, Volkswagen Montana green. It is beautiful. But if you do have any questions on uh, how to do any of this stuff, by all means, you know, leave me a comment. Um, any suggestions on how to do things better, you know, if you are someone who's experienced with body, leave comments. You know, the more of this stuff that we can spread around, the, the better work we can do with other people, and we can rescue. Sorry about that, neighbor's truck. We can rescue more of these beautiful little cars, keep them on the road longer, keep them rust free, keep their bodies straight next little bit of project we're gonna be working on is the door ding right here my grandpa actually moved my old GTI shell with a tractor he just kind of pushed it and so it did uh, dent the door slightly right there but we're gonna be massaging that back out and got my Porsche door handles back in those are off a 944 early model they are metal they fit so yeah here we are guys Thought I'd give you another update. It is back on the road. We drove it around quite a bit. Um, feels really nice. Suspension's right where we want it. Took me a little while to get the rear wheel bearings torqued just right, but uh, they're happy now. Feel nice and tight. No howling. Pretty excited. But all in all, the uh, little turd is back on the road. Really happy with it. Next major project will be transmission in that car. VR6, lovely, I hate it. We'll see you next time. Another update. I think we're up to, what, number nine now, I think. We've gotten quite a bit done. We had some issues the other day that we had to take care of, but uh, we've got most of the sound system installed. 1200 watt four channel amp on the left side, 1200 watt at four ohm uh, mono sub amp on the right, 12 inch Pioneer dual voice coil champion stuffed in the box there, which seals into the cab so that there's very little vibration in the trunk so I don't have to sound dead in this thing because it just adds weight. Had a little oil spill this morning so we're cleaning that up. We've installed a period correct clarion cassette deck with six disc changer and it all works that's currently got some uh, Steve Miller band in there you can see that uh, after getting into the, some heat during the uh, 
wonderful summers we've had that have been over a hundred degrees or for you folks uh, in the metric areas uh, over 40 degrees uh, it, it did uh, give me a couple warps there along the weld pretty minor stuff though no kinks or anything I'll be able to work those out pretty easily got everything primered you'll notice we now have an interior in here um, I was able to score a decent set of Recaro trophies. They got a, a little wear here and there. There's a spot and down here by the seat belt's a spot and a little burn. But overall, it's full set of seats. The rears are in really nice shape. I've modded the console here. Let me get it in focus for you. The Serio normally sits up here. I don't like it because you can never see when the sun shines on it. So I have modded my console to put it down here. These are all parts just from a scrapyard. I built a little metal bracket that I screwed down from the inside. Holds it nice and stable. It stays put during the bumps, so good to go. Got some factory fill speakers put in. Passat steering wheel. this thing to focus. Got some ugly door cards on there. The cloth is peeling. And uh, so right now they're just primer gray. I'd eventually like to do what I've done with the rears. The rears I have used what's called stone paint. And uh, you coat it on there nice and thick. I do have some touch-ups there after the crash because these were done before the crash. Uh, once these this sprayed, um, you let it cure and then you hit it with like a satin clear coat. Just nice and thick layers and layers of clear coat and it comes back looking like a resin granite uh, very very sharp looking um, we experimented on a friend's mark IV golf and it turned out really nice so that is our plan we're gonna be doing that here hopefully soon but I wanted to primer them so they weren't just the raw wood with adhesive ugliness on it uh, question for anybody who may know this is the door sticker that is from the donor car, that's the sticker from my old GTI. The original sticker was severely damaged. That whole portion was just crushed. Does anyone know if I can get that reprinted? Like say from the dealership or something like that um, so that I can put the correct sticker back on? Uh, if you do have any idea about that, please leave a comment because I would like to do that. I want to try to make this as legit as possible for a, a poor man who's doing it on his own. We've got the new grill in, ECS tuning, uh, $45 US badgeless grill. It's not a flawless fit, but it does look pretty good. I'm not going to paint it yet. I'm gonna see how the plastic lasts, just to kinda, just to kinda see how things are doing. We've got uh, genuine crosshair headlights with the H4 bulbs in them. These are hyper white bulbs, so they'll really brighten things up. And then we get to the complication that we had. While picking up some stuff for my kids across the uh, Missouri River at their grandma's house, the motor finally let go. I had never had a chance to time the previous engine properly. Uh, that was an, an ABA engine block, uh, basically out of the salvage yard, with the 1.8 8-valve Digifont head on it from the donor car that basically donated most of its guts to the original build of this and uh, the timing was never quite right um, it would ping under heavy throttle and it lasted for three years I'm not gonna complain that the little thing uh, it did pretty good for being a junkyard motor with no more money in it than a head gasket I even reused the old uh, studs which is a big no-no on these engines you always put new studs in but it lasted three years and then finally the number three cylinder uh, had a little too much heat. It uh, popped a ring on the uh, top of the piston, which blew the top of the piston off. And it pretty well chewed up the block, beat the bottom of the head to death. Piston's got a hole in it, so that motor's dead. But this one was in the process of being rebuilt in my basement. And so uh, I just had a reason to finish it a little bit quicker. It is, again, uh, you don't know if you can really see it. So we can lighten it up. It is an ABA block. It's easy to tell because it's got this big stupid breather thing 
on the front there. I've got just a sensor plugging off where the tube goes. But uh, ABA block, it's an early model from a 95, so it has the extra oil squirters inside, which is nice. Um, it is the Mexico block, so it does not have the forged crank. If you can get an early ABA block, uh, 93, 94 year, from Germany, those came with forged cranks in them. And uh, those work really well if you want to build a nice heavy engine. Uh, just using the head here, it's another Digifont head um, off of a Cabriolet. The head is exactly the same. If it's a Digifont head, it's a Digifont head. It doesn't matter which direction the intake went or anything like that. Bolts on. Uh, decided to do something a little different with the, uh, the valve cover. We used uh, Rust-Oleum hammered effect paint, which uh, leaves kind of a nice look there. It's, it's kind of a wrinkle finish. It's you know kind of got a little bit of a gloss uh, flake in it. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice sharp look, looks pretty good. Uh, takes forever to cure, it took like two days for that to cure and it's still wrinkled just a little bit when I put the, uh, the valve cover straps on. But uh, we just got finished doing the original break in, um, about 30 miles or so of really hard driving. People say, oh, break it in nice and easy. No, that is a no-no. Break it in hard, like you're racing it. What the, the purpose of the break-in isn't for the bearings or any of that kind of stuff. That has nothing to do with the break-in. The break-in is all about the rings. Well, after you hone a cylinder, those hone marks act as a very fine file inside the cylinder. And as the piston goes up and down, those hone marks actually file against the rings in the piston. And if you go lightly, it lightly files those rings. If you really put the beans to her, it builds a lot of compression in the cylinder and forces those rings out tightly, which gives them a better cut against that cylinder. Um, I've done a lot of reading online, um, talked to several guys that build race engines professionally, like that is their job, and that's how they break in every single motor they build, including their private vehicles. They run them hard, and uh, you know, 25 to 30 miles of slow it down and then punch it, run it through the gears. You know, obviously you gotta stay within legal limits. So if you can find a, an open highway where you're not gonna annoy anybody for constantly slowing way down, you know, keep it under the speed limit, keep it safe. Um, try to do your break in where nobody's at. If you have access to like an old abandoned runway, then by all means, that is an awesome place to do it. But it's hard throttle, go through the gears, slow it down. Hard throttle, go through the gears, slow it down. 25 or 30 miles of that, uh, I was I could actually notice a difference in this engine after doing that it tightened up uh, The throttle response was much crisper uh, the idle smoothed out just a little bit um, And uh, when you really give it the beans off the line um, These uh, skinny little tires it really struggles to to grip even without popping the clutch You know ease out and then punch it and it'll still rip them loose. So um, It does do a good job breaking in now you'll see the engine bay, it's kind of ugly. This is a daily driver. The chassis has about 170,000 miles on it, so it is not perfect, but uh, it is extremely reliable, extremely easy to work on. Um, I actually manually lifted that engine block into the car without a jack or anything like that. It weighs, with the clutch, I've been told around 300 pounds. So if that tells you I'm kind of a farm boy type, but uh, it's not hard to work on. The cylinder head is extremely light, even with the intake. Transmission only weighs about 60 pounds. So, you know, working on it is extremely easy. You can see I've got new connecting arms back in there. Yeah, you can kind of see the shininess. There you go. Uh, those are very cheap from uh, rockauto.com. Uh, check those guys out for little bushing replacement kits, little arms. Uh, tightens the shifter up really nice. Um, polyurethane bushings from Meisterworks, uh, I mentioned them uh, prior to tearing everything apart here. You see I don't have my sticker anymore, it's a different door. But uh, Meisterworks uh, got me hooked up with a full set of uh, red polyurethane bushings for the whole suspension. Um, it, uh, it handles better than a new car. The steering is tight, the response is tight, the brakes are tight. Everything on this car feels brand new. And uh, hopefully before too long, my goal is maybe by before the winter hits, uh, she's going to look brand new again as well. 
Uh, one concern, if anybody has any ideas, the uh, crinkle in the bumper here. I do like my skinny bumpers. I do like the red stripe. Um, if anybody has any recommendations as to how to kind of repair that, I'm okay if I have to smooth out the bumper or paint it or something like that. That's not a big deal. I can do that. But just, uh, I want it to be something that lasts. You know, I don't want to have to constantly redo it or whatever. So if anybody has any ideas on how to make that look good and stay nice, um, leave a comment. But yeah, here, here is the little girl, the lady in red. We'll be changing her name after we get her painted, but uh, she'll have to tell us what kind of name she wants. But uh, if you guys like this, give me a like. Any questions, comments, suggestions, anything like that, let me know in the comments. And as we do more work to her, we'll uh, throw up some more updates. Peace out. Just a short little update, adding to the build. Definitely apologize if it's windy. I'll try to make it quick here. We uh, got the new wheels on today. A set of uh, G60 Sebrings here. Pretty cool looking wheel. Found out that the regular center cap from a lot of the old Mark I and Mark II wheels do fit in the little center hub. I don't have the uh, center caps for these yet. They're uh, still on the way. But got these refinished, mounted up with some new hand cooks today drive pretty nice. They're a uh, factory 15 inch by uh, 6 inch, 35 offset, just a factory tire or factory wheel. They fit pretty nice. Here's the fitment against the fenders there. Don't have to roll or anything even though the car is lowered by about 2 inches. They fit really good. Since we're going with uh, Montana Green, my uh, wife thought it would be an interesting idea if we did the wheels in tan. So here they are in the sun. And personally, I like the idea of the tan. It's uh, gonna look kinda cool. She uh, got dressed up a little bit, pretty happy with it.